you've decided this year is gonna be the year that you learn to tackle your to-do list. On this video, we're gonna talk about three strategies for you to clear out your to-do list. I am a huge fan of a to-do list. I love all sorts of lists and to-do lists are no exception. To-do lists seem like a simple prospect. You just write down things that you need to do and you're gonna get them done, right? Sometimes it is that simple and sometimes it just isn't. So here are three different strategies to get you to get to to-do list zero. If you cannot identify a time to actually get things done, it's unlikely that they're gonna happen. So all three of my recommendations today have to do with some form of scheduling in your to-dos. The first and easiest way to schedule your to-dos is to look at your calendar or whatever kind of time management system you're using and identify blocks of time where you can plug in the specific to-dos. So if you have a to-do to call someone to clean out the gutters, you can identify a five or 10 minute period where you can do that. And you can actually plug it into your calendar and when it comes up as a reminder, you can go ahead and do that. There are some specific issues with time blocking for to-dos. I recently did a video on the science behind um, time blocking fails. So that's gonna be linked up above. But scheduling your to-dos is one step better than just writing out a large to-do list and hoping that you'll find some time to get that done. And although scheduling things out may not work to get through your entire to-do list, it actually is a pretty effective intervention for getting people to commit to doing something that they're feeling a little bit ambivalent about. In my work as a clinical psychologist, when someone is trying to engage in a specific behavior, we actually go through the process of scheduling a time when they're actually going to engage in that activity. And research has shown that actually scheduling out a time to engage in a specific action increases the likelihood that you'll engage in that specific thing. Okay, tip number two. You've tried to schedule in your to-dos and you're finding that you are getting like a lot of little things done, but you're actually avoiding some of the scarier or larger tasks. How do you get to check off the big things on your to-do list? I find that people that are avoiding large tasks are doing so for two reasons. First, there could be some sort of fear involved with accomplishing the tasks. It's possible that you're pushing things up to the top of the to-do list that are lower stakes and they're less anxiety and fear producing, so you don't really feel like it's a big deal if you get them done. When you increase the stakes, it increases the fear and anxiety related to perfectionism or possibly messing up that task. So there is this general tendency to avoid those things, which is why for years I have used the Eisenhower decision matrix to classify my to-dos. The Eisenhower decision matrix is a two by two matrix where you classify things in terms of importance and urgency. Urgency for me is things that have to be done over the next week and importance for me are things that are related to my job, my livelihood, my reputation, things that are important to me. When things are of high importance and high urgency, they get priority in my schedule and I look for pockets of time where I can have deep focused work on accomplishing those specific tasks. When things are of low importance and low urgency, I might fit those into like 10 minute chunks that I have open in my schedule or I might use them as breaks from my larger tasks so I can get a little dopamine rush from checking off something on my to-do list, but I make sure that I'm not focusing all of my energy on these low importance, low urgency tasks. Just because those things are easy to do doesn't necessarily mean it's what I should be focusing my effort on. The third way of organizing your to-do list is to have general blocks of time organized by energy. So I'm gonna schedule blocks of time in my calendar dedicated to high energy to-dos and low energy to-dos. I tend to have a lull in my energy around 2 p.m. This has actually been shown in several studies looking at human circadian rhythms. So we have a natural lull around two o'clock. Sometimes we reach for like cookies or coffee around that time to kind of pick us up. So if I have to do things like complete a required company training, for example, I'm gonna do that around 2, 3 p.m. and I'm not gonna focus on doing that around 9 a.m. when I am at my sharpest and have my highest energy. 
If you want to use this strategy, you want to divide your to-do list into two lists. You have a high energy list and a low energy list. Things that are going to be draining for you go into your low energy list. Things that are exciting or are going to require a lot of investment in brain power, that's going to go into your high energy list. Then when you reach your high energy block, you're going to go through that list and you're going to select a to do item from that high energy list. And when you reach a block of low energy time on your calendar, you're going to take out your to do list and you're going to look at all of your low energy tasks and you're going to select from that one. As you can see, these to-do list strategies have moved from least flexible, where you're actually scheduling in your specific to-dos in a specific time block, to least restrictive or most flexible. In this strategy, you're going to be guided by the block if it's high or low energy, and you're gonna be selecting on the go. So in considering a to-do list strategy, it's important to have some level of self-awareness to know if you prefer things to be less flexible or more flexible. I tend to prefer being in the middle and using the Eisenhower decision matrix. That allows me to focus on things that are important, but I also like having the urgency domain so that I know when I have to move things up and down on my to-do list. Also helps me to prioritize things that are important. Now, what is important could vary from person to person, and what's important to me is really based on my specific values. And recently I did a video on how to select goals based on your values. As part of that, I also did a deep dive into identifying my own personal values. So if you're interested in checking out one of those videos, they are linked on the screen right now.